Well, hi, kids, children, adults, grandparents, people of all ages. You might be a cat, you might be a dog, or anything between, or an inanimate object. Uh, today I'm going to talk about several different things. Uh, <clears throat> all kind of related in one way or another. Uh, but, uh, we'll, so we'll get started. Um, <clears throat> technology is changing. Um, it used to be all about power on your computers and your machines. It used to be about how much memory did you have, how big was your hard drive, or, or how fast was your hard drive for that matter, uh, how fast was your CPU, and for the gamers, how fast was your video card. But it's really not that way anymore. No one seems to care about that. <clears throat> Moore's Law has kind of gone away. What it seems to be all about now is convenience and ease in how easy it is. It's no longer about the juice. It's about how simple and convenient it is to carry something around, no matter if it's slow or not. People don't care anymore. People just want things to work. They don't care about the guts anymore. In general. I'm talking in a general sense. There's, of course, people like me who still do care about that crap. But, most people don't know nowadays. So what happens, of course, now is no, you now, now really, most people don't have, well, it seems like anyway, most people don't have regular plain old cell phones anymore. Most people have smartphones. I still have a dumb phone. And I'll switch eventually, but I don't see the need to do it right now. Uh, and of course, and then with that being said, with all the technology changing, everything seems to be going to touch. To an extent, I kind of think it might be a bit on the side of hype, that everything just has to be touch, but it certainly has its purposes. Um, I have my... But, you know, let's talk about this. On this, my three-year-old iPod Touch second generation, which is still alive, and I'm still using it. Are you going to do FPS games with this? Probably not. And if you do, it probably won't be uh, very friendly. Are you going to do photo manipulation with this? Most likely not. Are you going to do video editing with this? Most likely not. <coughs> Are you even going to do Word documents or spreadsheets with this? Most likely not. And it'd be kind of clunky and hard to do on this little screen anyway. And even on a tablet, it might be kind of a pain in the rear to do that. Now, a tablet's probably got a little bit more useful for production than this is. But my point is, they have their different purposes. Keyboard and mouse based system, like this, or my laptop, my Toshiba here or my MacBook, they have different purposes, in my opinion, than a touchscreen does. However, your typical user doesn't care about much of that. They don't care nowadays. Of course, there's still some that do. Okay, so I'm not limiting everybody, because I obviously use a lot of other stuff. But most users don't care about photo manipulation or video editing or live streaming. They just care about taking quick little easy pictures. They care about their Facebook, their internet browsing, and their email in general. And maybe watch a couple video clips here and there. For so if something like that, your touch screen touch based device works probably real well for that. And especially that you can take it with you anywhere you go. It's light, it's easy to carry, and most of the times now the batteries on these kinds of devices last forever. So you don't have to worry about going dead on you after an hour or two of use like you would on a say a notebook. So they have their purposes. But I don't, I, I, at this point in time, in my opinion, and of course this is all my opinion, others' opinions will differ and will variate. So don't shoot me down. And if you do, I'll stab you in the eye with a red ink pen. Uh, anyway, uh, now I lost my train of thought. I don't know. So anyway, this has a completely different purpose than 
this, well, my monitor, woohoo, my computer back here, does, and my notebook does. And I don't want these items replaced anytime soon until they can make these little teeny tiny devices actually work for production. Now, what I see, how I, I don't follow the tablet market that closely because I don't have a tablet. And at the present moment in time, I don't need a tablet. I might get a new iPod Touch this year because it's old. I don't know. It's still working fine. So I may not. Uh, you know, losing my train of thought again. My brain is not functioning this morning or actually afternoon now. See, I can't even pay. I can't even pay attention to realize it's afternoon and not morning now. So, for me, I still like my desktop, my notebook, but okay, I remember what I was going to say. Finally, I remember what I was, remembered something. Okay, I still think, though, even though I don't follow the market that closely, I think, and it might already be on, on the way to happening, but I think these little teeny tiny devices such as this, smartphones, tablets, etc., someday I think you'll be able to use them as a full-fledged computer. You'll be able to hook up an external monitor to them. Some of you can hook up to a TV in that anyway. But you'll be able to hook up to a monitor with it. You'll be able to plug in a keyboard and mouse and your speakers and everything else, and your printer, everything. Of course, by then, all the all the printers will probably be Wi-Fi anyway. They're going that way anyway. But the thing is, someday, these things will replace these, but they're not at that point right now, and they certainly don't have the, there's enough, enough power right now to do it. Yes, now they have dual-core processors and a lot of these things, sometimes even quad-core now. They still don't have as much juice as these things have. Nor can they hold a terabyte or two or three of data. And if you had a, several terabytes of data storage on one of these kinds of devices, it would kill you because it would cost you thousands of dollars because SSDs are still expensive. They're coming down a little bit, but they're still expensive. All right now, regular hard drives are expensive too. Not as bad, but okay, I'm not going to that tangent. I'm going off topic here. All right. So now with all this being said, with the touch-based stuff, brings me to the next thing, Windows 8. I'm not, at this point in time, going to go into an opinion of what I think of Windows 8. There are things I like, there are things I don't like. I'm not going to get into it. I'm not going to tell you my overall opinion right now. It's too early. All I can tell you is based upon what I've used in the developer preview, the customer preview, which I think is what they're going to call it for their beta, is customer preview. Uh, it's supposed to come out later this month, rumor has it, so we'll see. And I'll have a little bit better of an idea of where they're going with it. Uh, I did hear rumors of, and of course this is a rumor, it's not confirmed that I've seen yet, but rumor has it that the start button is gone. They took out the start button, whether it's temporarily or, or permanently is another question too, but the rumor is the start button is gone. So there's not even a start button on your taskbar anymore. Once you go into your desktop, that is. So let's get back into that with Windows 8. Uh, a lot of you may already know, but uh, the way it's going, you know, essentially you have two user interfaces. Microsoft might tell you otherwise, but you have two user interfaces. You have a touch-based user interface, which is what you're greeted with when you hop into it, and then you click the desktop tile to go onto your desktop. Uh, so basically, they're moving it more towards a touch-friendly user interface, which is something that Windows has struggled with in the past. So we'll see if they've improved it. It's going to use the Metro UI, which they use in their Windows phones, and on some of them, and then some of their other devices, like their Zune. It looks kind of like how Zune looked, for those of you that don't even know what those are. Uh, but that's kind of the direction Microsoft's going with it. So you're going to have two user interfaces essentially. You're going to, it starts with the touch based thing. You can still use a keyboard and mouse in it. 
Uh, however, it is geared more towards touch. And then you have your class, quote unquote, classic desktop. It's been modified somewhat as well. But I won't go into that either right now. It's there's still a lot of things that I need to see yet to tell you everything about it. And they're still making changes to it right now as we speak before it hits the consumer preview stage. So we'll see. Okay. So anyway, for now I remain on my desktops or desktop and notebooks for my primary usage. This is more of a backup for if I'm going somewhere where I can't haul a notebook, such as some place to eat, or, you know, if I don't want to have to lug this around on a daily basis, uh, lug a 20-pound bag of notebooks around on a daily basis, then this is what I get to dig. And listen to music and play games, whatever. All right, so this is Nerd Long. And I approve this message, and if this seemed like a pointless video, well, maybe it was. Alright, say bye-bye.